Hey you, did you check your calendar? That's right. Today's the unspecified day in February in which I'm uploading this video all about Flash. Oh, nope, not that one. Nope, definitely not that one. Uh, ooh, oh wait, nope, that is a crime. And uh, no, oh wait, yeah, no, it is this one. HMO5, Flash. This move is touted as being able to blind foes, but just like the videos on Surf and Fly, I'm really only gonna be concerned with how the move works outside of battle. Just a heads up, this one is really tricky, so buckle up. To figure out what we need to be successful here, let's focus on the way Flash works in the games in which it was still in HM. This includes generations one, two, and three. In gens one and two, Flash completely illuminates an otherwise essentially pitch black area. Especially in gold, silver, and crystal, you cannot see anything except for the cave entrance without the use of flash. After using the move, the area is completely illuminated. For that reason, and to give Pokémon a fighting chance, we're going to focus on the way flash works in Gen 3 specifically. In these games, when flash is used, your area of vision increases slightly, which to me is basically how it would function if you had a decent lantern. Basically, it feels more realistic and also way more viable. In the past, I've always factored in whether a Pokemon could already learn the move in-game or not into my decision-making process, but for Flash, the move stopped being in HM as early as Gen 4 and then was excluded from the games entirely after Gen 7, so it wouldn't really be fair to all of the potential learners after Gen 7, which is a ton of Pokemon. Plus, I'm not really sure it matters. Like, Magcargo, as you'll see later, is one of the only Pokemon that I think, like, definitively should learn Flash, and yet it can't in the games. Meanwhile, Happiny? Good to go, baby. When considering Pokémon for Surf or Fly, it was a pretty easy question. Can the Pokémon float in water or fly through the air while carrying the protagonist? But for Flash, the question is a little bit more nuanced. There feel like a lot of different ways this could work. Like, for example, you might argue that any Pokémon that can use Flamethrower or Thunderbolt should be considered, because those moves are clearly pretty bright. Okay, sure, but can a Pokémon sustain either of those moves for hours while you traverse a cave? Probably not. The first big question we have to ask is how do Pokémon produce light? Like literally what mechanism do they use? There are a couple of Pokémon who have Pokédex entries that explicitly state that they produce tons of light, and for those guys I'm cool to just call it quits and say they can learn Flash. For instance, Solgaleo. It's his whole thing. Please let him have this. Uh, he's in danger of being forgotten. Please? 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 When it comes to light generation, most of the Pokémon that can already learn Flash in the games are electric type. I think the justification is that electricity equals light, right? Well, kind of. It's only when you put electricity through something, like an LED or a gas, that it can produce light. I'll grant you that arcing electricity certainly is visible as it arcs through the air, but sustaining an arc bright enough and wide enough to be helpful for a really long period of time would be crazy. So let's limit the electric types here to the ones whose Pokedex entries explicitly mention unbelievable amounts of electricity. Now, there are a few electric type Pokemon who explicitly glow via their electricity with some kind of bioluminescence, which is a real thing found in nature. Creating sustained light with electricity isn't really a question of high voltage, but these Pokémon demonstrate that they've got some kind of biomechanical process within themselves to turn electricity into light. What I want to focus on in this video, though, are the Pokémon who can't help but be using Flash all the time. We're going to be talking about the group of Pokémon who, kind of weirdly, are almost completely snubbed from learning Flash in the games, even though, as you'll see later, I'm pretty sure they might be the only Pokémon who should learn Flash. We're talking about fire types. But why fire types, you might ask? Well, have you ever noticed how steel starts to glow when it gets to really high temperatures? Like, literally the phrase, red hot? Why is that? Where does that come from? Well, first, we need to talk about light. You might be familiar with the electromagnetic spectrum. If not, here's a quick primer. Electromagnetic radiation travels in waves. The wavelength of the radiation determines where it falls on the spectrum. Do you have super long wavelengths? That's infrared light, microwave radiation, or radio waves. Super short wavelengths? That's more high energy stuff like UV light, X-rays, or gamma rays. But there's a little sweet spot where the human eye can pick up the radiation. We call this little region of the spectrum visible light, since it's the radiation that humans can see with the naked eye. And uh, humans get to pick the names for stuff because elephants haven't learned how to speak yet. 
stupid idiots. There are a lot of evolutionary reasons why we probably see specifically this part of the spectrum and not a different range of wavelengths, but it's what we've got. So in order for the light that Pokemon are producing to be useful to us, it needs to be visible light and not ultraviolet or gamma or anything like that. But how do we get from something hot to it producing visible light? Look, I know you're gonna laugh at the name of this next thing I'm gonna talk about, especially because the video is about Flash, but can we all just be adults about this, please? There is no reason to be Veen's displacement law is an extension of something called black body radiation. The first important thing to note about this is that heat is the transfer of energy. When something is hot, that means that its molecules are vibrating quickly, raising the object's temperature. Add enough heat to a system and you might give an electron enough energy to jump energy levels. I don't want to get too in the weeds on quantum mechanics in this video, subscribe now, but basically when electrons change energy levels, which they can only do in discrete quantized levels, and then drop back to their original energy level, they release a photon, the particle for light. Depending on the energy difference that the electron just experienced when it came back down, different wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation will be released. Get hot enough and the light might start to be in the visible part of the spectrum. Blackbody radiation refers specifically to a theoretical perfect object for studying this kind of physics. Every single thing in the world, be it a bird or a shirt or an ant, reflects light. For us humans who see in the visible spectrum, to our perspective, that's really all most things do, reflect light. That's what gives your blue shirt its color. The sun or the lamps in your room are producing light that hits your shirt. All of the visible wavelengths are being absorbed, except for blue. That's being reflected, and that's what hits your eyes and your brain processes as the color blue. The shirt doesn't produce any of its own visible light. It's not a source. Even the lamps producing the light in your room reflect some amount of light themselves, but a perfect black body reflects no light at all. With no reflection, any light or color that this object gives off must be coming from within. It's producing all of its own light. That is black body radiation. Now, of course, I don't think any Pokemon actually fits that model. Basically, nothing in the universe does. It's a theoretical object. But the principles behind black body radiation can be really helpful when expressing how much light an object is giving off as it heats up. Since we aren't taking into account reflections, you know, the Pokemon is in a dark cave with no other sources, we're really just taking into account how much light the Pokemon is producing on its own. And for those models, we can use blackbody radiation just fine. This is where Wien's displacement law, or just Wien's law, comes in. Developed by Wilhelm Wien, the man with the most insane name of all time, this law helps us correlate temperature to wavelength in a really simple way. Specifically, Wien's law shows how the peak wavelength of the blackbody radiation curve differs for different temperatures and energy levels. This is the equation I'm going to use to determine which Pokémon should learn Flash. Essentially, any Pokémon whose Pokédex entry explicitly states its internal or external temperature will be easily plottable on this chart by use of Wien's law to determine what wavelengths of light it will be producing. Remember that part at the beginning when I said I wasn't going to go through the whole Pokédex to find out which Pokémon could learn Flash? <laughs> well, I wound up looking through every single Fire-type's Pokédex entry and a lot more Pokémon just to see if any of them had temperatures listed in their dex entries. Luckily, for the first time ever in one of these videos, a bunch of this work had already been done by a different internet psychopath besides myself. A user called Mary255 cultivated a list of a ton of Pokémon that have temperatures listed in the Pokédex. I referenced their list, but also found a few more. So here we go. Who is hot enough to be flashing? <laughs> I don't, uh, I do not think I can say that. Everything is somewhat hot. A line that has described me many times. <laughs> He's lying. That's not true. He's just saying that to look cool, okay? That's not true. I just want to be a part of something. Outside of absolute zero or zero Kelvin, a temperature that isn't even theoretically achievable, every single thing in the universe has some amount of heat. Thus, it emits some amount of electromagnetic radiation. It's just that on Earth, since most things are at room temperature or cooler, they only emit in the infrared parts of the spectrum or lower. Around 500 degrees Celsius is when objects begin to emit a faint red color of visible light. Wien's law is able to tell us where the object's radiation peaks 
but the object will always emit differing amounts of radiation around the peak in other places as well. Thus, we can basically generalize that any Pokémon with a temperature of 500 degrees Celsius or greater is emitting at least some visible light. As we travel along the spectrum, the Pokémon will start to peak in different colors, and then will eventually eclipse visible light altogether and start emitting an incredible amount of light in ultraviolet parts of the spectrum. However, they will still be emitting large amounts of white visible light, hence the term white hot. Pansir and Fennekin are the two hashtag coolest Pokémon in the Pokédex to have a temperature listed. Unfortunately though for both of them, they're both still way too cool to produce any amount of visible light. But you know, Pansir's still like 600 degrees Fahrenheit, so maybe don't touch it. Next up, we're gonna move a little hotter to get to the Pokémon that'll start producing some amount of red visible light, but really not enough to be helpful. Magmar, Flareon, Slugma, Magby, Torchic, Nummel, Torkoal, Heatran, Darumaka, Darmanitan, the Carcoal line, Centiscorch, and the Charcadet line. Some of the Pokémon I just listed have visible flames on them though, which is like a whole other thing I'll cover in a moment. Okay, let's talk about Incineroar and Magmortar. Incineroar and Magmortar both have listed temperatures of 3600 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 2200 Kelvin. This, on its own, is hot enough to be glowing in the visible spectrum, but not with an incredible intensity. We're getting closer, but we're not quite there. Magmortar is probably even less viable, since it's just the fireballs it emits. The problem, though, is that the Pokédex says that Magmortar's body glows white from the fireballs, but 3600 degrees is not nearly hot enough to be emitting really any white light. It's almost like they just wrote down a random number in the Pokedex and didn't even think about the fact that I'd have to make this video in the year of our Lord, 2024. <laughs> I mean, come on, like what the heck? Now, if you were to ask me definitively, no holds barred, which Pokemon should be able to learn Flash, neglecting any of the hand wavy stuff I said earlier about electric types or Pokemon with light emitting listed in their dex entries, or any of the stuff about fire on their bodies that I'm going to talk about later, I would say there's really only five. These next five Pokemon are the only five that definitively, in my opinion, should be producing enough light to be using Flash literally all the time, and should be shoved deep underground like a Balrog or a maybe your search history. What if he checks? First up are Skeledurge and Delphox, who have dex entries that both explicitly state the production of flames at 5400 degrees Fahrenheit. This scorchingly hot temperature is firmly in the red part of the visible spectrum and has enough energy to almost certainly help in a dark cave. Next up to the plate is Pyroar, whose breath is 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know how this thing has fur on its body with internal temperatures that hot, and I especially don't know how it, quote, eats raw meat when the meat is definitely burnt to a crisp the instant it enters its mouth, but regardless, Pyroar's breath is comfortably in the blue part of the visible spectrum, and is the same temperature as the surface of the sun. So that's fun. You wouldn't have any trouble seeing in a dark cave with Pyroar around. You would have trouble seeing anything ever again. But that is still nothing compared to the two kings of this question, Magcargo and Camerupt. Not only do these two Pokémon have listed temperatures of 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit, but the Pokédex is pretty explicit that it's their bodies and not fireballs or fire magic that they're producing or anything. Magcargo's dex entry just says that its body temperature is roughly 18,000 degrees F. It does not get any clearer than that. Camerupt's dex entry also just says that it has magma flowing through its body like blood at 18,000 degrees. The one problem with that detail is that at those temperatures, the magma would be long evaporated into a gas. But like, who cares about the little details, right? Ha 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 ha! Regardless though, at that temperature, both of these Pokémon are emitting tons of radiation well into the UV parts of the spectrum, so lather on that sunscreen. But they're also producing a ton of visible light. That sunscreen joke was so dumb! Why did I improvise that? Let's talk about fire, the opposite of milk. Wait, what? Fire, famously the namesake for the fire type, is super easy to use Veen's Displacement Law for. And there are a ton of Pokémon in the Pokédex who have visible fire all over their bodies, but don't have an internal or external temperature listed in the Pokédex. But that's fine, you can literally tell how hot fire is based on its color. After all, that's what we've been talking about in this video, using wavelength and thus color to figure out an object's temperature. Color, temperature. 
Color, temperature, color, temperature, oh my god. Also, regardless of the color of the fire, just the fact that there is a visible flame on the Pokémon's body means you're probably getting enough visible light for it to be helpful anyway. I mean, that's basically what torches are for in, like, every action-adventure video game ever, and if Charmander isn't just a really cute torch, I don't know what he is. What? A lizard? Are you f***ing insane? With that being said, there are probably a ton of Pokémon I've already talked about in this video, and some I haven't talked about, that should be good to go. Like the Charmander line, the Ponyta line, the Litwick line, all of those should probably learn Flash. This has really weird ramifications for a Pokémon like Embor, whose shiny has a different color of fire and thus is hotter. I don't know what to do about that. I can't make a whole video that's like, which shiny Pokémon should learn Flash? I'll never sleep again. So if you ask me how many Pokémon should be able to learn Flash, my conservative answer is five. My somewhat more lenient answer is probably about 10, and my very lenient answer when I include any Pokémon with fire on its body, and a few of the electric types I mentioned, and also any Pokémon with a dex entry like Volcanion's, which says it can blow away a mountain, my answer is probably about 100 or so. Not bad. But it's five! I'm working on two huge projects at the moment, combining science and Pokemon, and I'll just tease that one of them involves this little guy, so be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss those. Fine, I'll throw you a little bone. If we hit 100,000 subscribers, I'll make the video you all keep asking for on which Pokemon should learn strength or not. Thanks for watching, okay, bye!